Get in, nerds. We are playing Hearts of Iron 4. Let's go ahead and get right into it. We're still basically setting up here. I'm doing some early infrastructure building. Um, just to make sure that my... Uh, I can operate fairly efficiently. I think the infrastructure play is generally the right one for the USA. Um, I don't often do it, but I think in this run it's going to be just fine. Um, to represent kind of the way the USA focused on building up things that were not necessarily war related in the early game. That's our research slot number five, so let's go ahead and do start with the war department. Um, and if we get lucky, we can go straight from that to the selective training act. I don't expect us to necessarily do that. We'll start a lobbying effort just to uh, hopefully make sure that that happens, and then we'll get started working on Naval garbage. Da, 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 da. I'll go with escort fleet for this. Yeah, those uh, those research things are going to cost us quite a bit of uh, political power, but it is what it is. Do I want to improve working conditions? I definitely want to. I think we're going to. better to have an air... Well, we're going to get so much air experience, though. On the other hand, it would be nice to have our doctrine started early. You know what? I think improving worker conditions is more historical. Ooh, but we can give refuge to the scientists. Mmm. That would be an excellent thing to spend our early political power on. Give us a huge research boost. Hmm. Hmm. We'll wait. I'll wait for now. No reason is USA to spend your political power too early. I say having already put uh, Eisenhower into the uh, head of command. We're going to go ahead and do relief of command. Um, the army does not exist to feed the ego of its generals. This is going to reduce our cost, political power cost for army advisors, which is going to be basically invaluable. It's also going to increase army experience gain, which is wonderful. Get us more and more of that tasty, tasty army experience. Alright, so we got a few factories under construction here. We do have infrastructure maxed out in our main production areas. Not including Maine, the state, but it is what it is. Uh, New England's kind of all together, and that's, uh, you know, I'm sure someone is going to object to it, but it is what it is. Get War Department working. Halfway there. Going to get our election event pretty soon. I think it's chill in Europe. I guess I don't need to spend too much time uh, talking about Europe, but we'll talk about Europe a little bit. So this is going to be, again, an extremely, extremely historical run. Uh, we're going to see uh, a war in Europe between the United Kingdom and France against the German Reich in Italy. German Reich is going to annex Austria in 38. Um, and they're going to start slicing off bits of Czechoslovakia early on. Poland is also going to be on the Allied side. Germany is going to take them over, and then Romania and Hungary are both going to align with Germany. Um, Yugoslavia is going to, uh, I think, support Germany and then have a coup. And here's the event. Uh, and that's going to be the war in Europe. Uh, they're definitely going to invade Albania. The uh, Axis are definitely going to invade Albania and Greece. Um, I think Bulgaria is going to join up with the Axis, too, eventually. The election of 1936. The day of the presidential election has arrived. Incumbent Franklin Delano Roosevelt has already implemented several of the programs, referred to collectively as the New Deal, intended to take the U.S. out of the Great Depression. While many of the efforts have been popular, his plans to further extend the role and powers of the government have met with criticism from his opponent, Fr uh, Republican Alf Landon, Coming from the oil industry, Landon wants to see greater economic freedom, while Roosevelt and the Democrats want to uh, expand Social Security and ensure economic stability. The election may be a close call or a major victory for the Democrats. Uh, the Democrats, four more years. This gives us uh, stability, stability and construction speed. Uh, or the Republicans, we must safeguard the ideals of the American system. This gives us some political power and gives us an industrial interest, which gives us faster synthetic research and industrial research speed. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one, because that's the historical thing. Uh, the people have spoken. I have never seen this 
uh, match historically what appears, so I'm not even going to read the numbers. Um, but this is the elections to Congress. Every two years, the th a third of the Senate seats and all the seats in the House of Representatives are up for re-election. While often overshadowed by world events, the local situation in each constituency can sometimes make the difference. The people have spoken. All right, how bad is it? Oh, it's real bad. It's real bad. We're not going to get a Selective Service Act right now, that's for sure. Uh, mechanical computing is finished. Let's go ahead and continue to work on the naval stuff. Uh, and that is the completion of Concentrated Industry 1. We're going to do a little bit more naval garbage for the moment, and then we'll flip back over to uh, industry. In fact, these two slots will be in industry pretty much necessarily. Because um, they'll be ready to go at the beginning of the year. Um, we're probably going to s absolutely blitz for another lobbying effort right away and try to see if we can... Ooh. Let's actually pay farm subsidies too. I think that's going to be worth it. It's going to slow down our construction a little bit, but that's not a tragedy. Plus, it's going to get us some extra uh, representatives. Um, we should have an opportunity to do a little bit of uh, pork barrel spending pretty soon. At least, typically, that gets more likely when these get when these are really low. Uh, I'm going to close this window because there's I think there's actually a glitch. Here we go. Senator from North Carolina offers support. The senators from North Carolina have approached the government, offering their support for the president in return for an informal guarantee that North Carolina would be the site of a new munitions plant for the Army. They argue that building a plant in the area would create a lot of jobs and provide the Army with much-needed support in an increasingly dangerous world. The two senators also mentioned their excellent working relationship with several influential members of the House. They make a lot of good points, or these kind of deals are below the president. I'm going to go with they make a lot of good points. This gives us a mission to build one military factory in North Carolina uh, within one year. And if we do it, we get up to 10 senators and 50 representatives, which is a great deal, given that we were going to build uh, military factories already. Our representative criticizes the president. During a recent debate on tax reform, a representative launched into a long-winded speech about the many failings of the administration. According to him, no right-thinking American could possibly want to support the policies of the president, whatever their party affiliation may be. His harsh words seem to have had an effect, as a number of representatives previously thought firmly behind the policies of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt have made noises of support. Disgraceful, so this costs us some representatives. Shame. ABL, always be lobbying. Just kidding. People will think you're a jerk if you do that. Yep, it looks like the nationalists are continuing to press forward in the Spanish Civil War. Although, the Republicans are winning here and here. Pressing, they're pressing forward in some areas, but the nationalists have taken Bilbao and uh, Oviedo. And that's going to be... Closing out the Northern Front will free up a lot of troops for them to continue pressing forward. Uh, in the center and south of the country. Um, we're also probably going to see an anarchist uprising over here in the northeast. We'll see how that goes. Let's see. There's radio. And it is closing in on December, so... We're just going to start the 1970, uh, 1937 research stuff for now, just to get that knocked out and started. Um, we're going to do construction, uh, industry concentration, and uh, production efficiency. We're not going to necessarily do the synthetic stuff right away, because um, we only need rubber for that. The USA is wall-to-wall, -wall, floor to ceiling oil. Um, Excuse me, that's an exaggeration, but only really by a little. Let's go ahead and get our armies exercising. Just get us a little bit of extra army experience and get these units uh, ready to go. Very good. Oh, boy. 
It's going to be. Let's see, I got air stuff. Probably. Oh, you know what? I do need the air guy to get my air experience. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get the air guy. But we'll wait because we need to have a lot of uh, political power in order to do these medium lobbying efforts. There's active sonar, so that's going to become improved machine tools. Synthetic oil experiments, we're going to go directly to construction after that. There's War Department completed. As you can see, we do not have the representatives or senators to go directly to selective training. So instead, we're going to go to the Rubber Reserve Company. Uh, and hopefully we'll have enough representatives by the time Rubber Reserve Company completes that we can go on to the Fair Labor Standards Act once the uh, drafting of the other resolutions has finished. All right, that's enough focus on research. Let's go ahead and grab another naval doctrine. I'm going to circle back through the level one ones. Uh, convoy escorts, this is going to give our destroyers extra organization and sub-detection and increased efficiency for convoy escort. That's going to be very important. I don't do convoy escort missions all that much, but... I'm not, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's smart of me to not do that. Uh, I definitely should be doing it. I just, I'm not as conscientious about it as uh, many people have recommended that I be. And I will almost assuredly pay the price for it in this run. Uh, we got our concentrated industry, so I'm going to go ahead and build up, uh, queue in some more factories and all of these high infrastructure zones that we built up all that infrastructure in. And as you can see, uh, there are quite a few uh, construction slots in these areas, so it, it, it's sensible that we end up uh, building a lot there. Smoke generators. Alright, so we've got all of our destroyer stuff's pretty much good to go. Let's get started on our battle line shipbuilders. I'm going to go ahead and queue in uh, a few more. Carriers. Uh, we got two carriers in construction. Let me start with three, right? Yes. All right. So I think I'm just going to increase these numbers to three. Uh, we got three naval bomber and three carrier wings. I always go half and half for carrier air. There are definitely people who recommend uh, doing something a little bit more aggressive uh, in terms of bombers but I don't I don't I don't tend towards that as a strategy I think it's better to uh, better to keep it in balance uh, let's see Spain continues to move apace I'm just gonna bring us up to speed four here there's not a whole lot going on in the early game we can definitely afford to wait um, once the death charge thrower has gotten finished researching I'm going to go ahead and build us Design us a 1936 destroyer. I'm going to just uh, build an, a, uh, an anti-submarine warfare destroyer to start out. And the majority of the destroyers that we build, at least the 1936 ones, are going to be that. Um, in 1940, sometimes I'll build a fleet destroyer if I really feel like it'll be useful. But I don't often do that. Um, I tend to think the fleet destroyer is a little bit of an extravagance. I, and, and, and basically, if I'm not playing as the United States... Or a country that's very, very reliant on small ships for doing uh, important naval work, I won't build it at all. Um, but I think it might make sense for arm run. Got quite a bit of army experience kicking around here. That's very good. I'm still going to save it for the time being. Actually, let's let's putz around with the officer corps. Let me see. Smoke and fire. I think is the historical. I would love to do flexible organization, but I don't think that's the historical part. I think I think for the United States, we're going to want smoke and fire for the spirit of divisional command. Um, it is going to give us a nice breakthrough bonus. We're not also not necessarily going to get it right away. Um, also, I think that still aggression might not have been the historical run, but uh, you know, I think it's fine. Um, for army command, uh, it's either inventive leadership or engineering schools, but I think it's engineering schools. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's a lot of science involved in digging a proper ditch. 
Again, if I were doing an optimal run, I would go with bold attack, but for this run, I think we're going to do engineering. There's depth charge thrower. So what else is there? I think that's everything in the naval, so we'll go ahead and get started on support naval stuff. Uh, and we'll design ourselves a destroyer. So, here's our destroyer 2. I always put the crab for my uh, ASW destroyer uh, icon. It's just the one that I like best. Go with historical destroyers. Uh, we're going to put extra sonar. Or, I'm going to put it in this slot. Uh, we're not going to put a fire control system in here because this destroyer is not for that. We're also not going to put a torpedo slot in there. We are going to put some AA in here, and we're going to put a dual-purpose main battery here. Uh, and then this is going to be all depth charges all the time. Uh, let's see. Extra hit points versus factory production output. Uh, versus surface visibility. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do cheaper destroyers. Go ahead and save this. Uh, and we're going to queue in we're going to queue in 20 of them. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm rather bullish on, uh, on, on ASW destroyers this time around. All right, so we finished with our three foci. Uh, we, cripes, we still need to, we still need to do lo a little bit of lobbying. Uh, unless I didn't get, no, I did get that. I did get my munitions plant done. All right, well, we're gonna do a small lobbying effort. This is gonna slow us down a little bit, uh, but it's gonna be more efficient ultimately. Could have done special measures, I suppose, but. Uh, and now we're going to wait until the Fair Labor Standards Act is ready to go. Uh, and if it gets real bad, I'll hit the uh, Special Measures button. But for the moment, we'll just accumulate a little bit of extra political power uh, while this sorts itself out. And we're going to pay farm subsidies again because we're doing really bad for representatives. Again, this is going to slow down our construction, but realistically, as the United States, we have such a giant pile of construction that it's it's probably not going to matter all that much. Got our divisions up there in experience, which is nice. Excellent. Opposition suffers defeat in the Senate. A motion to censure President Franklin Delano Roosevelt has been defeated in the Senate. While even its most ardent supporters had little hope that it would pass, the amount of votes against it came as a shock even to the most pessimistic of observers. It appears that the President enjoys a far greater level of support in the Senate than most believed, which should help in advancing his legislative agenda. Great. Thanks. Appreciate the vote of confidence, Congress. Why don't you support my trying to get rid of the Depression? I don't want to be depressed anymore, Congress. Congress! All right. Enough faffing about. How are things going in Spain? Spain's still kind of in a stalemate, but that's not shocking. Um, so Spain's going to have uh, volunteers from the Soviet Union, and then they're going to be volunteers from the German Reich, Italy, and also Portugal. Portugal's got people in nationalist Spain. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that would happen. House Committee supports presidential policy. Latest round of hearings in the House Committee on Ways and Means has resulted in a report crediting the president's policies with major improvement in all major available metrics of the economy. While stopping short of outright praise, the support nevertheless comes as a blow to those that were criticizing the president and demanding reforms. A number of representatives are already publicly declared that although they still harbor doubts about the president's agenda, they will now vote in support. As well they should. This is very good. This actually gives us uh, enough people to get started on the Fair Labor Standards Act. Uh, so this is going to take a few more days to sort itself out. I should really just memorize the date, but, uh, you know, I'm lazy, so it is what it is. This is what happens when you try 
getting your gaming content from an inebriated cat. Uh, once again, this is going to do exactly the same thing as the Agricultural Adjustment Act did. It's going to cost us some senators, uh, but it's going to make the Depression less bad. And that's very important. So I think after this, we'll immediately get started with a medium lobbying effort. And hopefully that'll push us over the line so that we can uh, fire off straight into the, uh, into the Selective Training Act. So... The Regional Defense Council of Aragon has declared war on Spain. The Regional Defense Council of Aragon has declared war on nationalist Spain. Um, this is the anarchist uprising that I talked about earlier. So now you can see this uh, red portion of Spain is anarchist. Anarchist uprising in the Spanish Civil War. Continue government attempts at reasserting centralized control over the most independently acting anarchist communes in northeastern Spain, as well as Stalinist repression of dissident commun uh, communist viewpoints has now led to full-blown infighting in the Republican front. Initially limited to street fighting and low-scale clashes between militias and government or Stalinist forces, the unwillingness for either side to compromise has meant the conflict has rapidly escalated in just a few days. The reallocation of military resources to deal with the internal threat means the front lines against the Nationalists have been noticeably weakened. The Republicans hardly need outside assistance to lose. Go ahead and get going with that. I'm also going to queue in uh, some convoy construction. Uh, we're going to add, all told, we're going to build about 500 convoys. Uh, and that's going to provide us with all the supply capacity we need. We're not going to spend too many naval dockyards on it for the moment, but it is going to be something we'll work on. Oh. I did, did I go ahead and do rubber processing? I did. What a hero. Uh, medium lobbying effort. Should get us where we need to be. Uh, well, yeah. So let's go ahead and get started with that then. Um, that's going to make our synthetic refineries much stronger. Uh, let's go ahead and queue in a few of those. I tend to put uh, some synthetic refineries kind of all over uh, the far west. Get us the uh, get us the rubber that we need, um, and then we're probably going to do uh, in some of these slightly more densely populated states. We're also going to put in some fuel silos, but we'll worry about that later. It's going to take a long time to get those built, but that's not necessarily a problem for us. Once again, we're losing political power. Um, I'm glad I didn't get that air guy, because we wouldn't be able to do these medium lobbying efforts. I, okay, so just to, to talk about the math here for a second, um, the small lobbying effort is minus 0 0.3 political power for 30 days, so that costs a total of 9 political power. The medium lobbying effort costs... Uh, 0 0.75 for 45 days, which is more than that, uh, by a little bit. Let's, let me not, let me not make this up for you. Let me just do the calculation on my phone. This is something I should know. 33.7 versus, uh, the small lining effort, uh, which is 9. Um, but I, what I've noticed is this, the small lobbying effort says up to five senators and up to 25 representatives. The medium lobbying effort says up to 10 senators and up to 50 representatives. In my experience, it is almost always like night and day in terms of how many you get. Like I think the small lobbying effort actually averages two and a half senators and 12 and a half representatives. I think the medium lobbying effort averages you uh, seven and a half senators and 37 and a half uh, representatives. I think it's, it's, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a little deceptive, but I think the, the, uh, the medium lobbying effort is uh, substantially more efficient overall. There's improved machine tools. That's good. We're looking pretty okay on naval. I'm going to keep going with some of this stuff. Um, just to continue to make sure we're up to date with our naval uh, fundamentals overall. I think 
after... So I think after this we're going to do the Neutrality Act. That's going to cost us some more support, but then we're going to go straight over to Selective Training, and that's going to give us more support back. Uh, and that's exactly the way we're going to do it. Uh, and by then we should have a huge pile of uh, representatives supporting the government. There's the heavy. I almost never build the super heavy battleship. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it's very good. So let's go ahead and work on other stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with better uh, light tanks. Um, because we're doing a historical run, I think the historical United States invests pretty heavily in both tank destroyers and self-propelled artillery. So we are going to do that as well. Uh, when the FLSA gets completed, we're going to have significantly uh, reduced depression debuffs. So uh, that's going to give us plenty more political power to play with. It's going to give us more resources, more recruitable pop, and more uh, construction, which is very, very nice. We're, uh, we're working on our first round of construction already. As you can see, those factories have already fed into... Oh, boy. The Chinese United Front. Uh, give me one second and I'll read this out. I've already fed directly into infantry equipment. Uh, and there's going to be more moving into artillery and support equipment. I'm actually going to queue four into support equipment, five into artillery. And then we're going to put two more into infantry equipment and then one each into trains and trucks. And then maybe we'll start on air. So this is the same event that we've had a bunch of different times. These are the warlord states that are all joining up together with the central Chinese clique, uh, which is to say China is represented on the map. Um, I'm just going to read the center one and we'll understand it's the same text for all three of them. Um, earlier today, China and the warlords issued a joint statement that the latter has now been formally granted member status of the Chinese United Front. Whether this partnership will be used for offensive or defensive purposes remains to be seen, but undoubtedly extensive joint military planning is already underway. So, this is Chiang Kai-shek forming up a faction. There's the Guangxi clique joining as well. The Chinese United Front forms. Okay, here's the event. Probably should have come first. It is what it is. Chiang Kai... Oh no, this is a different one. Well, I mean, this is the, the Chinese United Front forming, but this is something slightly different. Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong have issued a joint announcement declaring they have set aside their differences in the face of Japanese attack. Both sides will observe a strict policy of non-aggression against each other for as long as the war against Japan lasts, and have vowed to do everything in their power to throw back the invader. A number of smaller warlords have also declared their support, putting their forces under the command of, of Chiang Kai-shek. Whether the long-time enemies of the Chinese Civil War will actually work together remains to be seen, but, and many experts believe that this will do little more than delay the inevitable defeat of China, an unstable alliance. Um, Japan is not attacked yet, but that's probably scheduled for very soon. So here's China, the CC clique under Chiang Kai-shek. And they've got Shibe San Ma, Xinjiang, Yunnan, the Guangxi clique, and Communist China all uh, working together with them. The Hindenburg disaster. The German passenger airship Hindenburg was destroyed today while attempting to dock at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in the United States. For reasons not yet determined, the airship was engulfed in flames and crashed to the ground, claiming 35 lives. Due to the scarcity and expense of helium and the U.S. ban on exporting it, the Hindenburg, like all German passenger airships, was ultimately engineered to use hydrogen, which provides greater lift but is also flammable. With public faith shaken by this disaster and the rise of much faster passenger aircraft, this could spell the end of the era of airships. Oh, the humanity. Uh, there's some interesting possibilities for monarchist Germany if the Hindenburg doesn't go down. Uh, but we're not going to see that in this run because this is a very historical run. All right, so we got plenty of house support uh, and we got farm subsidies coming in pretty soon uh, to finish out the rest of that. So I'm hoping we'll be... Uh, will be rolling in senators and congressmen. Oh, that's not a good turn of phrase. Mm -mm, shouldn't have said that. Mm, don't like it. Shouldn't have said... Rolling in congressmen. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad news bears. All right. <laughs> we're just going to blow right by that. Blow right past that one. We're just going to... We're just going to not even worry about it. We're up at speed four so that we can chill. 
Uh, I, you'll notice that I still have a deficit of infantry equipment, and yet I'm developing a large surplus of artillery and uh, support equipment. Well, a small surplus of support equipment. Uh, that is not going to last. Um, <laughs> we're going to use a lot of artillery as the United States. There's concentrated industry level two. So next, I think we're going to research anti-tank. Uh, and then we'll put some more effort into tank tanks. Let's see. I'm going to queue up more of our, uh, of our most developed areas. Also, we're going to build up New Jersey. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Piercing cap shell, very good. <laughs> They're all called iron piercing cap shell. Ah, that's fine. Um, and then we're going to put a couple more slots into armor and start us producing some light tanks because this is an historical United States run. So we're going to build ourselves some Stuarts eventually. Um, let's see. Your army ordinance department seems good. Oh, I need a research slot focusing on radio. Gonna need that for building better destroyers. There's the opposition suffering a defeat in the Senate. Uh, I'm not gonna read that out again because you've seen it before already. All right, moving right along here. We got about 150 political power, but I, I, I'm still, I'm still hodling my political power for the moment. Um, I think we're going to end up going to the end of this month. Representative criticizes president. You've seen this one before. Uh, that might actually be a problem for me. How many do I need for? I'm going to get up to 25 for this though. Uh, how many do I need for selective training? I need 261, and I've currently got 268. So that shouldn't be a problem. We will go We will go to the end of the Neutrality Act. Finish that out and get started on our next one, and then we'll see how it goes. And we'll see how it goes, and then I mean we'll put a pin in the episode. Seems the anarchists are actually making good headway against the nationalists. We'll see how long that lasts. Amelia Earhart disappears. The famous aviator Amelia Earhart, the first woman to complete a solo flight across the Atlantic, has disappeared along with nav her navigator Fred Noonan near Howland Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The two were attempting a flight around the entire world in their twin-engine Lockheed Electra plane when they vanished. The search for the missing aviators is now being conducted by the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard but there is little hope of finding them. A loss for aviation. I'm going to go ahead and design us a fighter. I'm just going to call this the F-37. I know that's a very creative name for our, uh, our fighter, but... Okay, so we get four light machine guns, that's ten air attack. Two heavy machine guns, that's nine air attack. Okay, so we're going to go with massed light machine guns on this. Uh, we got our engine... Electronics will go with radio navigation for reduced night penalty. And then we'll go with uh, drop tanks for better range. Uh, design is to expand. Ow! Oh, jeepers. You 
You know what? It's time for our air guy. And there's Japan declaring war on China. So, that's kicking off the Second World War proper. Um, and as you can see, there's already fighting up here. So, we are going to get ourselves a pile of uh, base war support. In fact, it's already gone up. So, this is actually not ideal because we're going to lose uh, all the war support we currently got uh, from the Neutrality Act. But hopefully, that won't be too big of a uh, penalty. Japan declares war on Shanxi. Shanxi joins the United Front. Um, now what's going to cause this is Japan currently has a... Okay, here we go. Marco Polo Bridge Incident. Japanese and Chinese forces have skirmished inconclusively over the strategic Marco Polo Bridge located just southwest of Beijing. China has rejected Japan's demands for an apology and territorial concessions, claiming instead that the breaking point of Japanese aggression has been reached. Diplomats fear that the volatile situation could result in war at any time. Interesting times indeed. Italy abandons the naval treaty. Benito Mussolini today announced that Italy would no longer consider herself bound by the naval treaties she had signed. The world situation, he said, had made the choice inevitable. Italy was apparently uh, has apparently received reliable reports that several neighboring countries have begun aggressive naval expansion programs that threaten legitimate Italian interests in the area. The Italian Admiralty has refused to comment on rumors that several ships currently under construction were already planned without naval treaty restrictions in mind. We should review our own participation in the treaty. Uh, I think in the historical run, um, the UK does not demand the United States disarm, but they, they still often do from the AI. Right, there's the Neutrality Act completing. Uh, oh, this doesn't actually affect our war support. Selective Training Act. Why did I think it did? Also, our base war support's back down to zero. I thought... Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Well, in any case, let's go ahead and get her started since we've got the support. Um, and that's going to be all for today, friends. Uh, it's popped off in China. It hasn't popped off in Europe yet, but we'll see. Uh, but for now, I've had fun. I hope you all have had fun. And I will see you all on the other side.